So I hope you're all doing very well. Today, we're going to think about aluminum. It's aluminum, not aluminum. We live in Europe, we live in a country where we are very close friends with the Brits, and therefore it's aluminum, not aluminum, okay? I am trying to download Zoom on the other laptop as well, so I can see the comments, because they're a bit far away. But of course, you can always jump in and speak. And if you need anything, just ask. And I'll be able to help you out. Now, welcome, Michael. You managed to make it. Good, great. So, aluminium. Aluminium is the 13th element, which means that it has 13 protons. Therefore, aluminium atom will have 13 electrons, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. So in the last shell, it has three electrons. Okay, in the last shell, it has three electrons, which means that this is the last shell. Remember the difference between orbitals, it's most its highest energy orbit is the 3p and gels. Okay. Now, so what happens when you actually react aluminium? Aluminium loses three electrons to form Al3. Plus. And Al3 plus is a very, very one second. Are you seeing everything inverted? No. That's correct. Good. Because my screen is showing everything inverted. That's fine. Um, now, so aluminium forms a plus. Now, aluminium has 13 protons here and 10 electrons, which means that it would have a very high pole. Okay, and now we're going to speak about something called charge to radius ratio. Okay. We're going to be speaking about what we call charge to radius ratio. Now, I have mentioned this in the past, but this time is the first time where it's going to be very, very important because aluminium has a few properties that are dependent on this very high ratio, this very, very large charge ratio. Charge to radius ratio. So we can call this Q on R. Okay? And it is the relationship between charge and size. So of course, the higher your charge, the higher your charge to radius ratio would be. The smaller your radius, again, it would be a higher charge. So here we can compare Na plus versus Mg plus and Na plus versus K plus. Okay, why these two? Because sodium and magnesium 
are both in period three. Note that, note that they are in period three, because a lot of you did not know this for your exam, okay, what period three is. So, so you would have q equals plus one, and radius, let's say it's radius S. Magnesium, Q equals to plus and radius it's U. But we know that because magnesium has more protons and because magnesium has less electrons, S is bigger than U. So the radius normally already decreases a lot of periodic table. So a lot of periodic table, the radius becomes smaller. So, in some of the comments, so when the Shinu you say Joe. Because we have two radii, mm -hmm. I gave them different letters so we can distinguish between the radius for sodium uh, okay. and the radius for magnesium. But they are just radius, okay? okay. Thank yeah. you. Yes, please do feel free to drop by if you want to ask a question. Now, why is one larger? So normally we say, and we've established, or you had established with JPCA, that in the beginning, size in the table actually decreases along the period. It decreases around the period because you have the same shielding, but you have more protons. If you have more protons, the effective nuclear pull on the outermost electrons will be bigger, and therefore size decreases. In fact, helium is the smallest atom. Helium is smaller than hydrogen. The third smallest would actually be neon. Now, having said that, here there is an even bigger item because both sodium, both Na plus and then G2 plus have 10 electrons each. But sodium has 11 protons and Mg2 plus has 12 protons. And of course, 12 protons are gonna pull more on 10 electrons than 11 protons can ever do. Okay, so the fact that magnesium G2 plus has more protons, that means that Na plus is gonna be smaller. So S radius for sodium is gonna be bigger than the radius for magnesium. Here, then it goes without yeah. saying that. Sir, give Na plus smaller. No, bigger. All right, okay, okay, okay. So, Q on R for Na plus must be smaller than Q on R for Mg2 plus. Why? Because Q of Na plus is actually smaller than Q Mg2 plus. One is plus one, the other one is plus two. And S is bigger than U. R Na plus is bigger than R Mg2 plus. What? I should have done the full screen or the full view. Like the cameras. I'm using my phone. Shit. Uh. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to write this stuff. But then, right. this will be going online. 
Now, um, so this means that Q is smaller, R is bigger, therefore it's always going to be bigger for MG2 plus, okay? MG2 plus has a much higher P1 than MG plus. Have we all understood the theory behind it? Q is charge, Matthias. Yes, Lauren? You can speak, tell Lauren. Sir, I didn't understand the RNA plus is bigger than the RMG2 plus. Okay, so NA plus has a different protons, right? Uh -huh. MG2 plus has 12 protons. Do we agree there? Yes. Yes, okay. Both are pulling on 10 electrons because both ions are isoelectronic, meaning that both ions actually have the same number of electrons. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Yes. <laughs> now, if they are both pulling on the same number of electrons, which will pull more, magnesium with 12 or sodium with 11? Magnesium. And therefore, magnesium is smaller. Uh, you know, you said that the size decreases along a period. So even like normal atoms without them being ions, uh, Mg has a smaller radius. Yes. And then with this one, it would be even smaller. Exactly. Okay. So, tell me how. So, if you read the smaller the ratio, the larger the radius. The smaller ratio is bigger radius. Yes, it would be. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, you ma ki all right, fim how you broke down Q on R. Imma ma fim chun basal face MG C G larger than than the sodium. Because Q is bigger and R is smaller. Alek um yek wahda ikbar min yek wahda kbira wahda zay rakif short time time time. It's like this ten on two and twenty on one, right? Q is bigger and R is smaller. Because it's the denominator that you're making smaller, the number becomes bigger. So, Jane. Did you really radius actually affect what? Both. Normally, I would actually say is the charge. If the charge is higher, then it's always going to be higher. But in this, in this case, both items. Both the radius and the charge are making Q on R bigger. All right, let's take Fimta. Just meta to speak up in number of Fimta, but. Okay? Yeah. You comment. That's when you have a problem like. Yeah. One second, one second. No. When you okay. have like this, you actually start simply by putting in numbers. It's not so that I don't explain. <laughs> from it. But when you put the number yourself, when you actually decide, okay, let me take control of this problem, let me take control of this question, I want to try and sort it out. You will actually understand it a lot more. Okay? Don't worry, you can ask me even outside of the lesson. These are extraordinary, extraordinary times for us, even as a teacher. Okay? It's new. But don't worry, ask and I'll answer. But sometimes you might need to have some time where you actually try it on your own. Tell me what you Um, personally, can we charge one radius that name different from the Uh huh. Um, no, no, I think but you can still compare um the charge on radius ratio tipo. Yes, but that's what you're comparing. You're not comparing the charges. You're not comparing the ratio. Yeah. You're comparing the ratio. All right, so get the album is of the terms that it's considered a compound machine. Exactly. Okay. 
Thank What's you. What's there? Who is this? Matthias. Ben Matthias. Less greater than you. Dick me fay J. Aj Dick man such me fem. S U R radius the sodium. U U R radius the magnesium. Oh yeah, okay, so okay. Now, sodium and potassium. In sodium and potassium, the charges are the same. Sir. Yes, Johnny. Ashina can atali. Um, basically, a charge ta sodium or a bar me charge ta mg to plus. No. Ashkin can atali to the wife and the to plus. Pshish? Sodium is plus, magnesium is two plus. Did you feel a charge ta magnesium igbar? Of course. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, here, charge is the same. So what can we compare? We can only compare the radius. Now, R for potassium is bigger than R for Na+. Why? Because R for potassium, potassium is lower down in the series, in the group, therefore it must be bigger than that for sodium. Here, Q and R for potassium would be higher. For sodium, sorry. Because sodium has the smallest ratio, the smallest radius. If it has the smallest radius, that means Q and R is bigger. Okay, I'll improve my handwriting. So Q and R for sodium for Na plus it's higher, therefore it is more polarizable. Now these terms we haven't really used. You'll use them a lot in an organic polarizing and polarizability. Polarizing is when you have a high Q and R, it means it's going to pull electrons towards it. Polarizable when you are allow something else to pull in electrons. We'll discuss this because it's something that we're going to be speaking about today. Now, are we all comfortable with what the QNR is? So, This is the why, okay? We don't do anything in chemistry because we feel just feel like it, okay? We do this because there is a reason. A high Q and R ratio results in covalent character. And this is very, very important. A high Q and R ratio will result in a covalent character. What does this mean? It means that aluminum chloride is not ionic. Aluminum chloride is covalent. Aluminum oxide why is it not covalent, okay? It doesn't, even, it doesn't make it covalent. It has a high degree of covalent character, okay? Hey. Yes? So aluminium is unphotetic because it can have both a high and low covalent character. Aluminium or aluminium oxide is unphotetic, which we're going to do. Aluminium oxide is unphotetic because it has a high degree of covalency in it, okay? So it can react both like covalent compounds and also like ionic compounds. 
Ah, ok, thank you. Sir, page fear down. Meta con namin na um tan number. Eh, uh, kona namin one list fail or namin na bain one or two contactly isu kuno bain na yon e koko valent down uma. What you're mentioning is electronegativity. Heady. Electronegativity primarily is a product of the, of the QNA. So yes, they would be the same. All right, thank you. Okay. When I say high Q and R, it means yes, yeah, the charge compared to the radius is huge. So the charge distribution around the molecule is very, very present. Okay, so you have a large charge and a small radius. In fact, normally, and we're going to be see, seeing this in the coming weeks with transition methods, anytime you have anything with a 3 plus charge, because we're going to be still speaking about period 3, if it's transition methods, okay, there are periods 4, but we're speaking about the 3D shell. We're going to be speaking about their charge over radius. We're going to be speaking about the Fe3 plus, Cr3 plus. Okay, and their respective reactivities and why they actually do something different from Fc2 plus, for example. But this is for the coming weeks. For now, let's make sure we're comfortable with charge over radius ratio because the first lesson today, that's what I wanted to discuss. Yes? So ALCL3 is mostly covalent because it has the highest charge to radius ratio, which it can have. So, ALCL3 is more covalent than AL2O3 because Q1R works both ways. It works with the cations and it also works with the anions, okay? So the anions would have a similar ideology, okay? So if you wanted to work for oxygen and chlorine, you would realize that chlorine has a lower Q1R than oxygen, even though we don't really speak about Q1Rs for the anions, it's also there. So if you have two high Q1Rs, that are high for aluminum and high for oxygen, it will actually become more ionic. But in fact, it's, most, it's mostly ionic with some covalent character. But don't get confused because you're mentioning the anions you know that oxygen is more electronegative than chlorine. So it's going to be pulling more of those electrons. Um, while, the, while the aluminum wants to get the electrons back, oxygen will not let uh -huh. do that. Yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Thank you, Shabaya. <laughs> now, remember, if you need to speak, you can put your mic on mute. Sorry, sorry, it was bad. No, it's problem. okay. I thought you were speaking to me, though. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now. The further just to speak, I'll give to them a cycle of compounds. Did you feel it? To have them separate, aluminum, alejo, chlorine. When you have a compound, you can do it separately. But normally, we're speaking about Q1Rs because of what, what I want to do next. Okay? So Q1R is you're going to be using with dumping, where it comes to the composition of carbonates, the composition of hydrogen carbonates, the composition of nitrates, and why group one and group two are different. So do you remember carbonates from group two decompose, but from, from group one they don't? Why? Because of the Q1R. Okay? Group two have a high Q1R, they pull electrons from the carbonate, making the carbonate weaker. Okay? I just explained one of, one of the G's lessons. But of course, we're going to, going to go into a lot more detail than what I just did. But in reality, when you have a, a compound, 
you can't just say aluminum has a high Q1R, therefore it's going to be covalent. You have to note what the other atom is. And chlorine and oxygen are both electronegative, but oxygen is much more electronegative than chlorine. Therefore, it's going to pull on the electrons much more than chlorine, making AL2O3 more ionic than chlorine, AlCl3. If this has a lower Q1R, that means that it's going to allow the aluminium to pull the electrons back. And therefore, it's going to be more, more shared, more covalent. So remember, covalent and the ionic character is the ability to pull the electrons. A covalent bond is sharing of electrons, right? So if aluminium is pulling the electrons back, then it's going to become more covalent. Okay. Now, so ALCN3, aluminium was, is, has a high Q1R, therefore it's pulling the electrons back towards it. Remember, aluminium normally loses three electrons, but the high Q1R means it's going to do what? It's going to attract the electrons back. Okay? Whereas then it's going to become a factor between chlorine and oxygen. Chlorine is going to allow that pull much more than the oxygen. Oxygen wants the electrons for itself. It's more electronegative. Chlorine is more passive. Okay? Now, I will try and write bigger, Martin. Okay? I will try and write bigger. So, Q1R is done. Sir. Yes? A high Q1R. Um, in that it will attract electrons. In the case of metals or in the case of an ions as well. Which kind of ions this? A guy. No, no. Speaking about metals, Q1R, we normally think about metals. Okay? Which is right. to an ions. <laughs> different. Alright, did you feel you can accept not a high Q1R will attract the electrons, thus making it more covalent? Is all at this pair metals? Yes, because we normally use it for metals, even if you look this up, okay, Q1R, it's for metals, then it's fine. Alright, thank you. <laughs> Sir? Yes? Did you feel the higher the Q1R, um, how does this polarization? Did you feel you will not look. The higher the QR make it more pol polarizing. Yes. More? Polarizing. Okay. Can you explain what Amber said, please? Can you shout, Lauren? Can you explain what Amber said, please? So Amber said, is this for metals only or not? And as I told you a number of times today, Consider this Q1R to be for metals only. Of course, a metal and a non-metal, a cation and an ion would be different. Because cations are positive, therefore Q1R would be pulling on electrons, and for an ion it would be different because they're negative. Okay? Let's not go into an ion, because we use this for what I want to do next. Okay, I'm going to speak about AL3 plus as an ion in water and why. Aluminium compounds have a pH which is less than seven. Okay, that's what I want to discuss now. Now, are you all comfortable with pH? With the pH scale going from one to fourteen? Yeah. Yes, Jordi. chlorine or oxygen or we used the Jordi. Today, I did I tell you there is a ratio as well. But normally, when we're actually working with Q1R, we're going to be doing what we're doing now. Okay? Oh, okay. Why, are, why are certain methods acidic and others are not? Don't worry. It's not the end of the world if you think that 
there might there could be foreign ions as well. There is. If you go and study chemistry at university, there will be. But it's not the point here, okay? The point here is to actually explain that aluminum has a high QR. Okay, thank you. Welcome to the tell me. Um, I'm asking the difference about electronegativity or Q and R. They are products of each other. Okay. okay. But remember, yeah. Q and R, when it comes to transition methods, you can have different charges compared to um, the same element. For example, a few plus and a few plus. Whereas for electronegativity, you normally have one for the metal. Again, that's not entirely true, but let's simplify things for now. Sorry. Yes? Well, the QNR are much for positive ions, but for electronegativity and negative. No, electronegativity is for everything. Oh, okay. And what is QNR for positive bis? QNR is for the positive bis. That's, that's, that's for the best. Now, so, ALP plus solutions are acidic. When ALP plus is this solved in water H plus ions are released. Now this is probably a surprise for you guys because up till now you got acids as factors of releasing or as factors of dissolving HCN, dissolving H2 and so forth, dissolving HNO3. But this is actually quite different. Why are we speaking about AL3 plus being acidic? Because AL3 plus, when it, when it reacts, interacts with water, it has a high QNR. And what does this mean? It wants to obtain, it wants to pull electrons. So if you are Al3 plus and you only have water in solution, what will you do? You will pull electrons away from water. So we can draw it like this. I will also explain what this is, so. Have you ever heard of um, complexes? Have you done complex titrations in practical? Yes, no. Yes, really. A complex is an interaction of, it, of a central metal atom or ion with a ligand. And the ligand is something that donates electrons to the central metal ion through a dative bond. This is why I wanted to speak about dative bonds last time. Now, complex formation, we're going to be doing it in a lot more detail when we do transition methods. Sure. Yes, Kai? Oh no, leach plus ions are released. Yes, sir. When water surrounds aluminium, the AL3 plus is going to pull on the electrons of the water, right? Now, if it pulls on the electrons from the water, the oxygen will pull electrons from the hydrogen. What does that mean? What does that leave? It actually ends up having AL3 plus OH minus plus H plus. 
ستايل لارو تا ديتيف بوند لي عملت وادا تا بوند لي الومنيوم و لوهرا نو نو اي دونت نقول تا ديتيف بوند ذير ماشيني تيك بولينغ اوف الكترونز اوكي سو دي الكترونز ار بينغ بولد تواردز الومنيوم Okay. If an arrow on the line, so every time you see that, that means the electrons are going to be closer to aluminium than they are to the oxygen. All right. Okay. Is an inductive effect the very? Speak it up. Was there a damn set like on M water? In aluminium, yes. And in fact, but don't worry about the shape, don't worry about how many. For now, consider it at six. It's an octahedral shape, but I think we're going to spend at least around half an hour speaking about this when we do transition methods. Okay? And transition methods this okay. year, we're going to be doing them straight after aluminium. Sir? Yes, Jenny? Can you re-explain how the H plus originates please and where it's how what? Tipo, why? Because there are electrons being pulled and H plus is formed. So, A L three plus pulls oxygen from the pulls electrons from the oxygen. Agreed. Kul hati abal ma hadi. Emma, how exactly? Because it has a high Q one R. It has a high pull. It has a high uh, charge ratio, right? So it's, if it's oh, positive, okay. it's going to pull what? If it's positive, it's going to pull something negative, the electron. The electrons it pulls from the oxygen. The oxygen is quite electronegative on its own as well. So it's not going to be happy. So what will happen? It will pull, then pull the electrons from the hydrogen. When this happens, mm -hmm. then you end up being in a situation where the proton is released. The oxygen hydrogen one is weakened and hydrogen is lost. Oh, okay. Okay. And so the hydrogen bond between the oxygen and hydrogen is lost and then H plus is released. Yes. Okay, thank you. Process is repeated until Al H2O twice or H4. Minus is formed plus four H plus. Okay, so the process keeps on repeating until you get four H plus, which actually makes uh, it was six in my H plus. Eh? You can you can see the water was six H plus high form of la Okay, remember the pool at some point will stop, right? And the pull stops up to four. This is going to be something that we're going to be, we're going to be seeing quite regularly. The first four steps are easy, then the last two are much harder. Don't see it. One second. We don't need to know the reasons why. Just know that it stops at four. Tell me. They are for H plus. For aluminum, yes. All well, right, thank you. Sir, can I always just the square bracket out? I should just know. Just the square bracket. Show me that number four. I am not such a normal matter to accept this shell. Pass already. You must put this fee in yet. Alright, alright. Alright, alright. I'm checking. I I have lines on my monitor, okay, but you can't see where they are actually actually you can see this one. Ajili al bar is so that in Zelatol or so. It's for me to actually know where to stop. So, this is the reason why aluminium is acidic. Okay? Are we clear about this? Wait, sir, why does it stop at four? Because, like, I, I forgot. Why are there people? Now, listen. There are people on the screen that are not from class. SPG, SPZ should not be here. 
unless someone gave him the link. Now, if you think this is fun, you need to get a life. Because get coming here and disrupting my class is not something that you should be doing in your free time at this particular moment. There are students who actually want to learn. I, I, I actually paid money to be using Zoom for this group for this amount of time. So don't take it like me. Now, yes, what we were saying? Wait, why does it stop at four again? It stops at four. I didn't explain why. I just tell you it stops at four, okay? Um, it can't do more. The QR will be decreasing here, remember. It's full is only going to be as strong as what's present. And at this point, it's being neutralized with four of H minuses. Remember, these will be one compound here. So it has electrons to pull. It doesn't need to pull more electrons. electrons. Let's say that. It's okay, not a complete story, but let's stop there. Okay. Okay? So Yes? Doc, lay L O six H twelve. Doc man Feiji. Just as I'm pure, just what to fight. Doc, Lel, 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 ما لي يل تريبلاس في او فين ام ورا ديك اها امك ليتش داو كول اوريت اوكي اوكي ثانك يو اي ام ليزي اف يو هافنت ريلايز باي ناو ذا اي ام ليزي اند دو نايت اند دو نايت سي وين اي ثرو ذا هيدروجين اوكي ام سي متى عشان تيت لي تي جي اسيتيك Per fil fejl sa jgħat solution li s-sidi kaċ l-verta l-alumiljum jġi għal-kari mitil l-inverti t-kommas għax u OH speċi. Is-solution li jgħat s-sidi kħi jgħas. Iċu l-alumiljum għat maħin bitil l-imperse. Ja, l-alumiljum maħin bitil l-imperse ma solution when we speak about what's happening we speak about solutions. The solution is how much it is. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Gabriel. So why do six oxygens bond to aluminium? When it dissolves in water, it forms six. It's aluminium, when it dissolves in water, Ag+, always interacts with six. They're not bonded. There's an actual word. It's a complex. Okay? Um, but can we actually wait for transition methods for these? I will actually show you a few reactions as well. I think it's much, much better because I don't think I have aluminum nitrate. Let me check. Let me check. Give me a second. No. When we do transition methods, I have a few transition methods, okay, which I can play with. If the need arises, I go to school and I get a few more. Okay. Yes, Lauren? What happens to the electrons that are being pulled by the AL? It's the OH minus, right? So yeah. the electrons are still present in the compound. Remember, A entry plus and overall charge is minus. What does that mean? It means that each of these OHs is an OH minus. Don't get lost with the complex that's formed, because that's something we're gonna be doing in a lot more detail when it comes to transition methods, okay? So I think that's the best way of doing it. Okay, thank you. Okay? Thank you. Now 
more strength to join. The high Q and R. This can only happen because you have a high Q and R. This will not happen with gallium or indium. Okay, gallium and indium don't have enough high Q and R to make the solution acidic. When we're going to be speaking about Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus, for example, Fe3 plus is going to have a much higher Q1 than Fe2 plus. Of course, its charge is bigger. Therefore, Fe3 plus will be more acidic. So I would ask you, for example, a question here. Why is Fe3 plus more acidic than Fe2 plus? And you explain with the Q1R, and then you explain with the charges and pulling of charges. But today we're doing aluminium. So let's not go into that detail. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell you that Laura is trying to join, but she can't. Can you send her the link again? Mike, uh, you might be the guru. How did you solve your issue? But login or password, yes. So, so can you send the login and password to our Okay. All right, all right. Sir. Yes? Aluminium 3 plus is more acidic than Fe3 plus. I wouldn't know. Okay. I think it's. Sir. It shouldn't be. That's what it is. Fe3 plus should be more. But I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the number, but I, I can check for you. AL3 plus should be more acidic because it's pure higher side. But okay. they might be very similar. Tell me. Sir, so uh, aluminium is polarizable. AL3 plus is polarizing. Ah, AL3 plus, not aluminium. No, it's the, it's the cation. So AL, wait. Ah, AL3 plus is, uh, is polarizable. Yes. No, it's polarizing. Okay. There's a difference between polarizable and polarizing. It is the one that's going to do the poly polarizability. Oh, okay. So, such this be a question of polarizability. That was the John says, please. <laughs> so, polar, I will, listen, for these, I will, I will prepare a small video. It's the easiest. Uh, yeah, yeah, I should, okay. like, lift for the weekly. There was something I wanted to say and I forgot. Yes. Polarizable. Polarizable. One second, one second. Yeah. Okay, boron is not a metal. Therefore, boron will never lose three electrons. Okay? It's not even possible. Boron is not metal. It shares electrons only. Yes? So the polarizable ones have a low Q on R? That would be true. Okay. So, on photonic nature of Al two O three, what does the term photonic mean? It means it can react both acids and bases, and this. Is brilliant because it means that it can actually react with a variety of compounds. Now, simplicity here when it reacts with acids is obvious. You have Al2O3 plus HCl to give AlCl3 plus 3H2O. That is very, very simple. Unfortunately, this is not the case when it reacts with hydroxides. Can anyone tell me the test for aluminum when it reacts with excess sodium hydroxide? Does anyone know what happens? White precipitate. What happens to the white precipitate, though? 
Uh, it dissolves in excess acid. It dissolves in excess acid. Because there are two reactions that are taking place. First one is aluminum oxide, rather than AOH, to give you ALOH3. And this is nice and fun. That's what you would expect. If this is behaving as an acid, and this is solid. But then, in excess, this goes further to give you to give you this. So it gives you an anion. And this anion is now soluble. So first you produce an insoluble solid. Under excess conditions, you actually form something aqueous. And your precipitate dissolves. Your precipitate actually dissolves. Now, these are not balanced. Mainly, if you want to balance them, I wouldn't be able to do them like this. But these are not balanced, okay? They're balanced on my notes. So please do take a look at the notes. But normally, you don't write them as two separate equations, you write them as one. And this is the overall equation. Yeah, must you do it like that, Dave? Hold on, hold on, I'll give you. But it should all be in line with what I'm It's all on screen. Up till now, it's all on screen. Okay, so now these are, this is the reaction with the base. Pretty much, pretty much every time you have an alcoholic compound, so I think you deal with zinc, you deal with lead, you deal with aluminum when you're doing analysis. This is what's happening, okay? I'm not speaking about the transition methods because the transition methods, they're a bit special. Transition methods, they are actually, they form complexes. So you can't really always say this is what's happening. But here, this reaction is the first reaction, second reaction, and the two complete reaction. This is the one that you get when you add excess Acid. Are we clear about this? Why did you know? Does anyone know if Laura managed to make it into the chat? Into the lesson? Yes, I managed. I have no idea what's happening because I missed like 10 minutes, but I'm back. What? Ah, so you left and came back? Yes, it kicked me out and I spent a good like 10 minutes trying to come back, but it wasn't setting me, but now I did it. Okay, so I, I was going to say I should be allowed to have more than 40 minutes because I paid for the subscription and it did actually let me because I it's been on for around an hour or something now. So don't worry, I will be holding the video, Laura. Okay, okay thank you. 
No. Yeah. The next thing I want to speak about is aluminum chloride. Okay? And once we do aluminum chloride for today, we will stop here. So I'm going to give you a few questions to think about. Then I will send them on the Facebook group as well, so you can actually answer them. But aluminum is a very short chapter. In fact, it's not the first time that schools do this chapter in conjunction with others. And a lot of the things that you have heard here would be the three things you will, we will either cover or we have covered in previous chapters. Now, aluminum chloride can either be hydrated or not. So, hydrated or anhydrous. Hydrated aluminum chloride is something we actually already know how to prepare. Why? Because you get the base with acid and voila, you get your hydrated aluminum chloride. The anhydrous one, it's probably simpler than you think. If you had to try and guess how to prepare anhydrous aluminum chloride, what, what would actually come to mind? How would you think you prepare anhydrous aluminum chloride? Aluminum and chlorine. Exactly. We take away CLCL3. Crystallization of the hydrated ALCL3. The easiest way to make any compound, if the reaction is possible, is direct combination, direct synthesis of the elements. And this reaction here is actually possible. Okay? So you can actually get aluminium and chlorine and form aluminium chloride. And that is what happens here. Now, you can't actually prepare aluminium chloride by drying, since so this would actually prepare the oxide. If you were to heat aluminium chloride in water, you would actually revert back to the oxide leaf form. Okay? So you can't just dry ALCL3. The dehydrating agent will ask my them. The dehydrating agent is a pure CaCl2, you work. In my opinion, I think you're going to a lot of trouble to get the hydrating agent. Because remember, normally when you say you are drying, you don't just dry a few drops of water. You are drying batches, right? Let's say you want to prepare one ton of aluminum chloride. These are normally scales that we're going to speak about. That means you require a lot of drying agents, so you might want to find simpler ones. So, okay? Try it. Do you, did you know that aluminum chloride supplies? Sheesh. Did you know that aluminum chloride sublimes? Of course. Mm. Uh, yeah. <coughs> now, let's take a couple of notes here. Aluminum chloride is mostly covalent. So its melting point and boiling point, will it be high or low? <coughs> what do you think? Will the melting point be high or low? Low. Now, it's not just 
mostly covalent, aluminium chloride is this. It's completely symmetrical. So there are no charges, okay? Or there are no dipoles in that molecule. Aluminium chloride is dipole free. It has zero dipoles, which means you can't actually have charge interactions between different atoms or uh, different molecules. So what happens here? You have something that is has an actually a low boiling point, but aluminium is electron deficient. Okay, chlorine is an electron donor. Can the chlorine donate electron to the aluminium it is directly attached to? No. Okay, it can't happen, but it can send electrons to another to another molecule. So aluminium. Chloride dimerizes and it dimerizes like this. Serge, if you met on the bond by layer or CL3 for the molecule, the uh -huh. electrons must be CL3. Second, second. This electron here is coming from CL. But at that point, aluminium is still um, electron deficient, right? One. It was one. Right? It's still electron deficient, which means that it can't just get two electrons from the chlorine again, extra. As an electron to electron, you can't just solve it as one. Otherwise, aluminium would be happy and chlorine would be happy. But dimerization takes place because when you dimerize, the chlorine on one aluminium donates two electrons to aluminium on another molecule, and its chlorine would then donate, would then donate. Okay. The apologies, say you withdraw. So one chlorine So I wrote the numbers to show what's what, okay? Aluminium chloride one will donate some electrons for aluminium chloride two. And aluminum chloride 2 will donate some electrons to aluminum chloride 1. Dimerizes, it means a dimer. Have you done, you've done some polymerization, right? Mer is unit, poly is long, di is 2. So it's two units joining together. It's one unit and the second unit. Okay? It's two units joining together. Sir, the rows fill up my that. It's so dative bond. Uh, this is why we've done dative bonding yesterday. So that today we can actually speak about aluminium chloride. All right, thank you. Okay, so this chlorine is giving two electrons to aluminium, and this yeah. chlorine is giving two electrons to this aluminium. So for yeah. the fact, yes. Um, kol darba li forma dimer? Ma jkunx bil forsi di kollok dative bonding iġi firi jew? No, because you have other dimers, for example, you have a 2 4 is a dimer. Alright, iġi firi bzal kas partikolari? Yes, it has to. Alright, okay. But how will it form if there are no dative bonds? Okay. It dimerizes because when actually you have the aluminium is electron deficient and the chlorine is an electron donor. 
So two molecules can combine to make sure that both molecules have an aluminium that has a full octet, a full outer shell. When that happens, it works. And when it happens, immediately, you can actually get your final product. Okay. Okay? So, is the is the AL3AL already has a full octet now? No. AL3AL. Titan do electron. Titan do two or six. Ah, okay. Okay. Remember, revise shapes because shapes are crucial when we're doing an organic. And the shapes that how we've done them is actually normally actually works quite well. Okay, now, this breaks down at 180 degrees. Forming a gas. So, when it breaks down to form ALCL3, it turns from a solid to a gas. What I want to ask you, okay, before at least I stop recording, because then I can take questions. I want to ask you, why does it break down? And I'm gonna note, think, about delta G. Okay? Why does it break down? And I want you to think about delta G. Okay? 